This week on the Computer Chronicles, the newest in PDAs, Palm Tops and Handhelds. We'll show you the newest accessories and software downloads for the Palm Pilot. Take a look at the new PDQ from Qualcomm, part cell phone, part PDA. Philips has two cool new entries in the field, the Nino and the Velo. Plus a look at the new Hitachi Mini Notebook, a cool new Hewlett Packard mobile device called the CapShare 910, and the smallest PDA of all, Franklin's Rex Pro. We'll also have a first look at Wireless Knowledge, the new mobile connectivity joint venture between Microsoft and Qualcomm. Plus my pick of the week, a new program to help you discover the joy of programming. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Cybersmith, wired for fun and learning, with locations in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Palo Alto, California, and White Plains, New York. And by TechWeb, for up-to-the-minute technology news. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, once upon a time, this was a big deal, a sharp wizard, a palm top device that lets you make notes, keep schedules, organize contacts, do spreadsheets, even play games. This is now ancient history. In this new world of mobile computing, wireless devices, email, sync cradles, PDAs, handheld and palm top computing devices are doing things we never thought possible in such a small form factor. And the product that really started the revolution is the Palm Pilot. And we have a Palm Pilot expert here, David Pogue, who has written the ultimate guide to the Palm Pilot. Hundreds of pages on just that little <laughs> thing. All right, let's talk about it. First of all, there's the new Palm 3, David. They want me to spend another 400 bucks to upgrade <laughs> my Pilot. What do I get in the upgrade? What's, why is it worth it? Well, some of the, the size and shape is the same. It's a little slimmer at the bottom. It has a hard cover. Hard cover so maybe you don't crash the Worth glass. 400 bucks right here, yeah. <laughs> Available in a, in a variety of designer colors. True. All right. Um, also, there's some neat new software features. The, uh, you have a choice of typefaces, some of which are much bigger and much so more So you can have readable. bigger fonts if you want. But the coolest feature is right here, the infrared beaming feature. This is a transmitter here. I can point mine at yours, send okay. you my business card with a single press of a button with all my phone numbers and email, send you one of my programs, send you a page of memo, directions to my house, whatever it is. Or print to a printer just by beaming at an IR printer. There's a shareware program that lets yeah. you aim this at an HP IR printer and it will, the okay. printout slides out. And more memory, right? Twice as much memory, two megs, right? All right, so let's talk about some of the things that you can do with a pilot that a lot of people don't do. Now, number one, a lot of people buy the thing and they just sort of use it as is and don't know there are thousands of software programs you can download into that. Right? That's absolutely true. Uh, my book comes with 900 of them. It's okay. an illustrated searchable database. These are a few of the ones that, that come with the thing. One thing that shocks a lot of people is that this is actually a grayscale device. So this is a free web browser called ProxyWeb. Huh. It's an excellent one. Here's my bookmark list. I'm going to go to my own, uh, my own web page here and show you what web browsing looks like on the Palm Pilot. Here we are, I'm scrolling through, the graphics come through as thumbnails, mm -hmm. and links show up as dotted line underlines like that. Um, and if I want to see what one of the graphics looks like larger, um, I just tap on it, choose view full size, and there's what a photo looks right. like on the Palm Pilot. All right, so you can do a browser. What else could you do? Um, there's a wonderful chess game. This is called Pocket Chess. Right, it is great. Again, these are things are tiny. This, this game is 17K. Let's see <laughs> Microsoft pull that. The good that old days, right. Exactly. And it gives a music program? Uh, yeah, th there's... Oh, okay, well, you got a graphics here's program. Here's graphics, right. It's just a regular drawing program like that. There's also a great music program called Pocket Synth with, uh, that has an actual uh, keyboard here. So it's so one note at a time, so Bach would need four Palm Pilots. But, <laughs> but, and then there's one more that's just so much fun, I have to show it. It's totally useless, but a blast. The tricorder <laughs> for Trekkies. <laughs> exactly. Well, people stare at you enough when you're carrying this thing right. around. Now they say, what is it? Now right. what you do is you point it at them, and you okay. tell them it's a scanner. You hold down a button. Like it, McCoy would have used, right? <laughs> and it gives you the readout. No intelligent life forms <laughs> present. All right, let me ask you about another thing. A lot of people have pilots. They never use it to enter data on the road because they have trouble with graffiti and figuring out how to get the stuff in there. It's really not so hard to do that, is it? Right, uh, correct. Graffiti is, of course, is this alphabet. And if you learn to write your characters this way, it's 100% accurate. Um, there are alternate systems that you can now install. One's called T9, one's called Jot, one's called Teal Script that lets you actually change what graffiti is. So customize it to your taste. Exactly. Okay? But you have some, some ideas for making graffiti easier, right? Because there are a couple of classic letters that people have problems right, with. Right, V's and D's and things like that. Um, one of the things I'm proudest of in the book is I've discovered 80 alternative graffiti keystrokes. For example... That work better. That work better. <laughs> All right. Here's the normal V. 
You have to make it like a square root yeah, sign. Yeah, but a lot of people have trouble. It turns out to be a U or something. Instead, just make a normal V backwards, right to left. Always it works, works perfectly. And for a D, instead of doing the normal D, which is just a capital uh -huh. like that, make an upside down O like that. Perfect. Huh. It comes out every time. All right, now there's a better solution than even that, and that is the new little keyboard. Right? There is, So yeah. you can turn your pilot into a kind of little mini laptop. People here. on the internet are raving about this thing. It's called the GoType Keyboard. Uh -huh. It's 80 bucks from a company called Landware. You just pop your Palm Pilot in there on the little cradle, turn right. it on, and bingo. Full keyboard. You're typing. Let's see the laptop wielders. It's word processor, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> exactly. David, thank you very much. Well, one of the problems with Palm Top devices is that there are too many of them. We carry around a cell phone, a PDA, pager, notebook, computer. The mm -hmm. ideal goal is to bring all this portable stuff together into one small, powerful, easy-to-use device. And I guess, Clint, that's the idea behind Qualcomm's PDQ, which is this little guy up here. Show it to us. First of all, it looks like just an ordinary cell phone, I guess, when you look at it. That's right. We've taken our CDMA phone technology, uh, the boards we use for the phones, right. and combined that with the Palm 3 computing platform. So there's a Palm Pilot built into this thing. That's right. So if you flip open that little lid there, we see, voila. You see everything. That's a normal, regular Palm Pilot, just like David showed us before. Everything you see on your Palm. Then right here, you've got the cell phone, phone. right back Now, there. explain the advantage of having these two guys plugged into each other. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but show us how you would use it. Well, the work we've done at Qualcomm is to integrate the Palm Pilot and the, and the, uh, the, the phone. So let's say you want to call somebody. Let's say I'll go to addresses right here. And just like a Palm, I want to look up Qualcomm. Here it is right there. I would pull up the number and it asked me if I want to dial. Right, but normally, I get the number, I got to scribble it down, go over, grab my phone, make the phone call. Here I just say, hey, dial that number That's for me. That's right. You found it with a few keystrokes and you hit dial. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm actually calling somebody. And the beauty of this is that you look up a name and you have all of their information. You've got the email. Uh -huh. You've got the whatever, however many phone numbers you right. have right there for the person. Okay. Now, the beauty, I think, is... I'm assuming if you have this Palm Pilot and the cell phone put together, you're now connected wirelessly. Whoop, there there's is. the call. Okay, thank you very much. We'll answer that and shut that off. There we go. All right. Uh, I can send email with this too, right? Because That's I can right. just get it to somebody's uh, internet account. That's right. What we can do also, let's say I want to email Computer Chronicles. Okay. Let's do a find, just like I would here with the Palm Pilot. Okay. And it's bringing it up. And uh, there, there's your producer. All right. So you're going to send her an email. Brings up her information and asks me down here, just like a Palm Pilot, am I done, edit, do I want a new message? Let's do dial. Mm -hmm. So there, up comes the email. I hit email. Enter a little email message. And it draws up the sheet right there. Huh. So now let's, uh, let's, uh, let's dial her and uh, tell her hello. Okay. Now, right now, the, car the uh, carriers don't have data up and running, but they will soon. Mm -hmm. And it's products like this that will get them sure. moving on that. All right, now let's take it to the next step. I assume if you can send email using your PDQ, I could also access the web and look up my web page. That's the third to. application we've put together. And what you would do is, this has a browser on it, mm -hmm. and it will strip out all the graphics and pull up a normal home page for you. Hmm. Now, it's not for sure from the web. You're not going to sit on right. this phone and do that. But if you want information. But if you access information that you need. From your company home page, you right. want to find out some information, you want to find something, you want to look up some numbers, it'll pull right to the internet. All right, now it seems to me there's a really interesting way to use this thing. Let's say we're at a meeting, a bunch of guys there. You're at one end of the table, I'm at the other end of the table. I've got my PDQ, you have your PDQ. I could like be kind of sneaky, right? And I really want to talk to you during the course of this meeting. Just send you a little email message from my little PDQ during the meeting and you're going to look at it over at your other end of the table. Oh yeah, and it looks like we're taking notes. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Or, or there are fun applications. Yeah. Like uh, you've seen chess. That's loaded up on. So I'm sitting uh, on, at the meeting and it's really boring. Really boring. And I want to play a game and they think I'm doing my work. That's right. Meanwhile, <laughs> you might be playing chess with a friend of yours halfway across the world. All right, so once again, this is simply like sitting at, a, at an internet terminal, being at my PC, right? I mean, I can almost do anything here because I am wirelessly interconnected to the web, to the net, to everything I want. That's right, everything you need. You carry your network around with you right here. So this is like the dream device, right? I mean, the Palm Pilot and the cell phone, so it's the interconnected pilot in a wireless way. Right, and it's the integration that's the key, to pull up yeah. a number, to pull up a name, an email, or call somebody right away. Right, it's very cool. Thank you very much, Thank Clint. You. Well, the PDQ is pretty darn cool, but it is by no means the end game in the challenge to come up with the perfect mobile computing device. That'll take some new technologies and some new partnerships, but guess what? Qualcomm and Microsoft have just announced a new joint venture to do just that. Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Washington was the site of a press conference announcing the formation of a new company called Wireless Knowledge. The joint venture between Microsoft and Qualcomm will provide a new range of wireless access across all kinds of devices and networks. Many people today 
uh, many people coming to this event, I think, have a speculation that what we're talking about today has something specifically to do with Windows CE and handsets, et cetera. And it does not. We're here really to ta talk about quite a broad view and a specific set of server-based services which our carrier partners will be able to offer to their customers. Wireless Knowledge will provide telecom carriers with a central network operating center based on standard internet protocols, one that supports virtually all wireless devices from telephones to pagers to computers. Microsoft calls it an agnostic approach. Oh, we're the classic agnostic guys. <laughs> um, what it means in terms of being agnostic is uh, the microbrowser that we're making available uh, will run on operating systems other than Windows operating systems. It will run on operating systems other than Windows CE or other than Windows. So that is being agnostic to us in terms of an operating system. Microsoft also introduced a micro browser for devices too small for Windows CE. The new browser will support email, calendars, and will synchronize the information across whatever devices are linked by the new service. But it's the local carriers that will be selling the service to end users. Our basic mentality as a company is to provide platforms. We sell somebody a Windows NT in exchange and we introduce them to a partner and that partner can then go help them provision a service. What we in Qualcomm elected to do in this case is to say, no, we'll provision the service and then we'll offer it on an OEM basis to carriers who can package it in and make it part of their overall offering. While the network servers will use Microsoft Internet software, the new company's owners insist that they are providing a nonpartisan service up to a point. Well, Windows CE is sort of indirectly involved. Uh, we're, uh, this venture will target all sorts of devices, uh, even if they're not Windows CE or Windows specifically. So uh, there's nothing in this venture that specifies or necessitates that those devices have to be Windows CE. Uh, that said, you know, we're going to be working very, very hard to make sure Windows CE are, you know, the optimal devices to receive this information. Now, obviously, it's a Microsoft and Qualcomm joint venture, and, you know, there is some preference for our devices, but we are very focused on making this equal to all other devices. There's nothing that precludes any other device from operating on the system. We are absolutely trying to go out and evangelize wireless data. While there are similar alliances in the discussion stage, wireless knowledge has many key parts of its network in place. The company has lined up nine carriers so far, including Sprint, AT&T, and Bell South. What made us decide we wanted to sign here was a belief that this truly was network technology agnostic, that Microsoft was in the game, that they were serious about enabling their products and services for wireless, and that through a combination of other factors, our networks, hardware, uh, new terminals now that can run all day and batteries, uh, the, the time was right. As a carrier, we could have created the same set of applications. We might be working on similar things. So wireless knowledge is only one of uh, a portfolio of services. But Microsoft and Qualcomm having made the decision to create these services, made it very easy for us to decide whether we want to be part of it. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. There are dozens of technology companies competing in the handheld market, all basically trying to outdo the Palm Pilot. One of the leaders in this field is Philips with two very interesting new Palm Top devices. And Chris, you're going to be our guide here. Let's start with this little Velo thing over here. Why would I want to use something like this instead of the Pilot as we saw before? Well, first and foremost, you can tell by the design. It's clamshell and it includes a, a keyboard. All right, so forget the input problem is solved because i got a little baby keyboard here. Exactly. And All then right. it's a Microsoft Windows CE-based device, so it's got Power uh, Pocket Office, which so includes So a little Word, a little Excel, Excel, a little PowerPoint. Exactly. So it's really designed to do heavy editing, so you've got the external keyboard power plus the extra applications. Okay. And how about connectivity? Well, the real neat part is that you've got an integrated 28 modem so here. That's a little uh, RJ11. Right. There. So you do your emails. You can synchronize with your desktop, send files back up, okay. synchronize them. 
And price range on the, on the VLO? Around $500, black and white model. Gotcha. All right, let's turn to Nino now, which is kind of interesting. This looks a little bit more like the, the, the pilot form factor. The issue with these things, as we've talked about it, is how do you get stuff into it? That's still difficult, whether it's graffiti exactly. or whatever. How have you tried to solve that problem with the Nino? Right, you've hit it on the head. It's getting things in and out is the essential part of this product. So we really started with the external design. And then we put the access for applications, the buttons, on the outside so you could do single hand operation you're driving a car. So you can navigate this thing without needing a pen and exactly. tapping on the Just screen and doing it that way. Hit a way. button I pulled up my calendar here. All right, now we talked earlier about people, you know, wanting to enter stuff and write with a pen on the screen. Some people have trouble with graffiti. You, in right. fact, use a different kind of handwriting recognition right. system, don't you? The operating system for Microsoft includes Jot, which is a character set that okay. you learn how to write. The Smart Writer, which you've mentioned, is an application that learns the way you write. So we'll pull up a note taker here and do a new note. And I'll just pull up my pen. Now mm -hmm. I can write anywhere on the screen as opposed to... So you don't have that, just that little teeny area exactly. to write in. And then I just... Write and you can write in. any way you want to write and eventually it'll learn how you write these letters. Exactly. Okay, you don't have to do its thing. Uh, let's talk about speech. That's another way to solve the problem of getting stuff into this device. Right. One thing you can do with this, as I understand it, is just talk to it, right? And record. Exactly. It's a digital tape recorder. Instead of calling your office voicemail to leave yourself a note, you mm -hmm. pick up your Nino and uh, program the first key to be All the right, voice recorder. So how recorder. do we do that? I press the first one. We're at Computer Chronicles having a good time. Now I know the recording's done. Now I'll just press play. So if I'm in the car, hey, exactly. just take a note right there with this mom. device. Exactly. And how, my, how many minutes of stuff could I get in there? Uh, you can get 16 minutes per megabyte in a 8 meg model. So. Oh, tons of stuff. You yeah. can write a novel in that. Exactly. Thing. All right, now what about using voice to tell it what to do? Voice commands. I can actually run the thing by talking to it. Exactly. So instead of trying to access an application or a phone number by you know, fumbling around with the buttons, right. you can just pick up the device and hit the, uh, another button that I programmed for it, dial. Brian, work. And now, actually, I could hold this up to the phone and dial the number. I All right, so you said dial. It says put it in dial mode. It did it. You said, here's the guy I want to call. It pulled up his number. You said work. That's the place I want to find him. Right, because there's alternative phone numbers. And that's the kind of thing you would just like stick on the mouthpiece of a phone then, and it would exactly. listen to the beeps. Exactly. Or you could just reference calendars or just get the information details that you want. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to dial. Now, this is a Windows CE device also? Windows CE based also, exactly, for the palm size PC. All right, now, what about syncing up? I, th I th see you have a sync cradle here, like you might with a Palm Pilot, but this is what, a little modem that would go with this right. thing? Right, so as you mentioned, you can sync with your PC, your contacts, calendars, email, and all of that. So where do, how does this fit files. on? And then you can also use the click on modem mm -hmm. by clicking on, and when you're on the road, you can call your PC and synchronize your files and get new email and, and upload your email. So that's a full modem. I mean, I could just, I could do full syncing modem. or I can access email or send email? Or send email, exactly. All right, what's the price range for the Nino? Uh, it ranges from three to five hundred dollars. All right, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Well, to complete our look at the newest palm tops and handhelds, we're going to show you four other little computing devices that cover the spectrum from tiny PC cards to mini notebooks. And Tom, you're our expert on this one. You're actually a consultant that helps companies design these things to figure out what it is the customers want, right? And also design features for it. Okay, great. Now, uh, you've got this little Hitachi Traveler uh, mini notebook here, and I guess the point is notebook computers are getting so small that maybe you don't need just that intermediary thing. Just do it all here, huh? Absolutely. Currently, you see a lot of PCs, uh, laptops on the market. They're about seven pounds, yeah. heavy, cost three, four thousand dollars, and the trend is going to smaller sizes, like this Hitachi box. It's here. under three pounds. This is uh, under three pounds. Tiny. It's tiny. It's about ten inches. Mm -hmm. It's got three point two gigabyte drive. Um, the usual spec you see from uh, any laptop PCs. Does everything. I mean, it does full everything. Windows PC. And especially this one is targeted for um, the office usage because, as you can see on the corner Ethernet here, port in there already, so it's network in. ready. So you don't have to plug in a PC card and have right. dongles and cables that would break and uh, you lose cables and things like that. Great. So nice little machine. This is um, the battery in the back here, right? So it's easy to snap on a snap second battery. Off. Um, it's actually pretty easy. There you go. That's it. All right, so maybe that's one solution if you really just want to have it all in one box. Precisely. All right, let's go to the another Hitachi guy, which is little HPW here. Now, what do I lose when I go down to something this small? Well, what separates um, this smaller box from the bigger box is that um, this one runs Windows CE and not Windows let's 95. Let's bring that forward a bit so everybody can see it. So this is a CE device, not a full Windows right. device. So it runs all the Microsoft uh, 
what you call baby apps, right. pocket applications for Word, for Excel, for PowerPoint. The problem with the notebooks is when you want to turn it on to look up somebody's phone number, it takes you five minutes for the thing to boot up. To that to solves up. that problem, right? Well, let's see how that works. Turn it on. Turn it on. Darn thing is on. That's Normally. It. Yeah. So it's one touch, uh, instant on because this box never goes completely shut off. It right. goes to suspend mode, it goes to sleep. So when you turn power on, the machine comes on. So what kind of battery life would I get out of this then? Though? On a box like this, uh, the for normal usage, uh, you get 10 to 12 hours really? of battery life. That's so not bad. So if you are a business professional getting on a plane and trying to do some work, mm -hmm. on one charge of battery, it may take you from here to New York and right. you keep working on it. And not it. a bad keyboard, really, for a small device. Uh, this thing has something like a 17 millimeter spacing keyboard, yeah. almost laptop-like keyboard, very typable. Okay, and what does this thing cost? This thing costs in the range of $700 to $900. So that, that's a pretty practical solution if you want to do more than just Absolutely. the typical And also this stuff. box would allow most people, most mobile professionals, to do email, web processing, yeah. um, contact database. Right. Let, let's take the next step. Let's move this stuff out of here a bit. And I want you to show me this new mm -hmm. HP gadget, which is really fantastic mm -hmm. if you have this particular need. Explain what this uh, CapShare is. Um, CapShare is a image capture device, uh, so it doubles as a scanner. And it stores the it's images. really a handheld scanner. It is a handheld scanner with um, storage capability. And, and communications capability. And transmission capability back to a printer or to a computer. So show us how you would. Suppose I got this document okay. and I want to send it to somebody. Well, power switch on the side, mm -hmm. power on, and to scan it's actually very easy. It's you just a hand here, scanner. Hand scanner, the light comes on, tells you it's gotcha. activated. You go like this, and... And now we've got a little built-in screen right. that shows us the documents in there. So now let me do a zoom. There's two levels of zoom. Right. It gets bigger, it gets bigger, and you can huh. rotate the images. And now I can dump this, what, into my PC? Two things you can do. There's an IRDA port here. Uh -huh. You can point them to a, a printer with IRDA so support. So I can print it directly? And print it. Or point it to a PC with IRDA support, and it will upload the images to your PC. Or email it, if I uh, wanted to? Once it's on the PC, then you can yeah, email okay. it. Yeah, OK. You cannot email from this box. That's a really cool thing. But you Capture. look at the... Um, the format of the files is a PDF uh, format. Okay. That so means you can put it right up on the web. Right on the web, and Great. any computer will open it. All right, I guess if size really matters, only on the small end, mm -hmm. this Rex Pro is really the ideal device. This is just a PC card, right, that, that slips into your, your uh, notebook computer. Absolutely. Um, this slips into PC cards for you to download data from the laptop, mm -hmm. um, contact database, appointment information, and things like that. And it's so small, you can put it in your pocket. And what, what does this hold now? How much does this hold? Um, a product like that will host something like 2,000 to 5,000 addresses, depending on the That's memory plenty. configuration. Plenty. And this is the new Rex Pro, which you can input device. And the old one, you actually couldn't put information in on the road. Correct. But you can actually punch in here and actually enter data and Absolutely. so on. Absolutely. And it's pretty inexpensive also, right? Now, these are a couple hundred dollars. So they're inexpensive to the point that you can afford to buy two of them. So if you have one and say, if you're lucky enough to have a secretary, mm -hmm. secretary has one, uh, what do you do then? You give the secretary one in the morning, yeah. and she would, he or she would enter the um, business card information that you collected in the last day, update your appointment, and you, as you leave the office in the afternoon, just keep you keep on swapping these swap. things each time. Everybody's up to date. Absolutely. Pretty easy. Thank you very much, Tom. All right, that's our look at handheld computing devices. Hope you found one you like. I'll be back in just a minute with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. Way back when, when PCs first came out and you bought your Apple II or your TRS-80, they didn't do very much. There was very little software. So these first-generation personal computers came bundled with the basic programming language. And you pretty much had to learn to program to get your computer to do anything useful. Fortunately, those days are over. There's a ton of software. No one has to program anything. But programming is great fun, one of the more exciting challenges of life. So I'm delighted to see that Interplay has come out with a terrific new piece of software that lets today's generation of computer owners learn again the thrill of writing a computer program. The software is called Learn to Program Basic, and it uses an updated version of Basic that lets you create lots of sophisticated applications from multimedia games to complex educational learning tools. It comes complete with a very well-done tutorial, which introduces you to the basic concepts of programming, Plus, it includes more than a dozen finished applications that you can open, examine, and reprogram. And it has several programming projects that lead you through the process of completing a variety of applications. So if you or your child would like the pleasure of writing your own software programs, I highly recommend Learn to Program Basic. It was developed by Presage Software and is being sold by Interplay Productions. 
That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week, of course, with the latest in hardware, software, and the internet. I hope we'll see you then. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Cybersmith, wired for fun and learning, with locations in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Palo Alto, California, and White Plains, New York. And by TechWeb, for up-to-the-minute technology news. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on The Computer Chronicles, a profile of Bill Gates. You'll see why Gates doesn't think Microsoft has a monopoly. You'll hear from a Microsoft critic who supports the antitrust suit against Gates. You'll hear from an industry journalist who says new technology may overtake Microsoft. And from the publisher of The Red Herring, who doubts Gates' commitment to Windows. Plus, Bill Gates tells us about his personal plans for the future. A profile of Bill Gates next week on The Computer Chronicles.